Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let this day be a reminder of Christ's victory, and grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together about Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to buy foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, 
and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas? or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas. Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Let, Let him be crucified. Why, what evil has he done? Let, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. His blood children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flagging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him. Hail, Hail King, King of the, of the Jews! Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him. He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness covered, came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, 
Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Palm Sunday has always been one of the most disconcerting worship experiences for me. Over the years, I have argued that we should just have the celebration of Christ's triumphal entry and let Good Friday be Good Friday, where we talk about the passion and death of Jesus. It might even be more historically accurate. Who knows? On the other hand, I have been known to argue that any allusion to palms after the passion narrative is inappropriate. I wanted this Sunday to be about one or the other the triumphal entry of Christ, or the passion of Christ. More so this year than ever before, I have come to learn that the sheer beauty and brilliance of this liturgy is in the realness of having both. We began by singing all glory, laud, and honor, I hope you did at home, and by hailing Christ as King. And then our focus turned to the cross, and we became the mob yelling, crucify him. Jerusalem was a busy city, and because it was the Passover holiday, more people than normal would have been there. Jesus entered the city with the twelve, and the other followers were hailing him as king. It probably, though, wasn't a huge spectacle. Now, I can imagine that many bystanders were wondering what was going on. Maybe some were even interested. Some probably snickered. Some fled. Others joined. In a few short days, Jesus would exit the city by the same gates, and a mob would gather to jeer him, throw things at him, curse him. Many of the same people were probably watching as he left for Golgotha, carrying his cross. Most of his disciples, his loyal followers, abandoned him. This day, Palm Sunday, is not intended to make us feel good. It makes us live with a sense of discomfort. Our actions today from hailing Jesus as king to shouting crucify him, make me uncomfortable. And I'm sure it does you as well. Why? Well, because it is all too real. We know we walk a very thin line between civilized and uncivilized behavior. It doesn't take much to incite a mob. It doesn't take much for chaos to ensue. Yet, 
Each time we offer a helping hand to someone in need, we are like Simon of Cyrene who helped to carry the cross. Or each time we care for the friendless, or the lonely, or the vulnerable, we are like Joseph who carried the body to the tomb. And each time we weep with a friend who is in sorrow, we are like the faithful women who wept for their friend their teacher, and their Lord. Each time we show or tell of God's love, we are like the first apostles and followers who walked the way of the cross, the way of the cross that because of the resurrection is none other than the way of life and peace. We can do that too as we walk alongside Jesus in our lives. The liturgical schizophrenia of the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday, is not designed to tear us down. Its intention, I believe, is to challenge us to be a more faithful follower of Christ. We need Palm Sunday's message now more than ever. We walk a thin line between faithful followers and those who shouted crucify him. We can be part of the crowd that jeers Jesus as he carries his cross, or we can be part of the triumphal entry of the king who comes in peace, mercy, justice, and love. We can be silenced by the darkness, fear, and pessimism of our time, or by the words and deeds of our life, make our troubled world cry out like that centurion. Truly, Jesus is the Son of God. As we walk, the way of the cross that is none other than the way of life and peace. Let us offer our intercessions to our God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the teaching in the name of Christ, we may sustain the weary with a word of courage, righteousness, and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Prince, our Bishop, Michael, our presiding Bishop, and for the clergy and staff of St. Paul's, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, that though we are dispersed, we may continue to grow in bonds of love and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil authority in our communities, in our nation, and throughout the world, that they may listen to the voices that cry out for help, for food, for dignity, and for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face insult and degradation because of race, religious belief, or political opinion, that they may be supported by the disciples of Jesus who took the form of a servant. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Eddie, Charles, Maria, Christine, Jamie, Diane, Marion, Gail, Adam, Lynn, Rick, Matthew, Ryan, Pam, June, Mary, Debbie, Jewel, and Tim. And for all the sick and suffering, especially the victims of COVID-19, that they might find comfort 
and hope in the image of Christ, the suffering servant. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, by their sufferings, shared in the passion and death of Christ, especially those whom we love but see no longer, that they may share fully in Christ's exaltation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord for those intercessions and thanksgivings that we name aloud where we are or hold in the silence of our hearts. Gathering now our prayers into one, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 